for people in the waiting room. Good morning, everyone. My name is John Pryor, and I'm your worship assistant for this morning. Welcome to the love and light that is Unity of Lawrence on Zoom. Glad you're all here and can join us on this beautiful first September Sunday. In Unity, we begin everything with prayer. Let's join our prayer chaplain, Karen, as we begin our service by opening to that divine presence we know is within us. Good morning. Let's just take a deep breath in and let it out. Take another breath in and center our attention inside. And sweet spirit of the divine, you live and flow through each of us. Help us wear your glory from the inside out that we might stream forth the radiance of thy light. Let us share this connection of good by knowing and honoring our oneness with all creation. With peace in our hearts, we walk in harmony and joy becomes the creator of life well lived. For this, we give thanks. Amen. Amen. Please join Holly in singing, We Are the Ones. This one is going out to all of our songbirds. Affirm with me unity's founding principle. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the source of all good. And now our unity of Lawrence vision. United in divine love and joy, we celebrate a peaceful and abundant world for all. And finally, our unity of Lawrence mission. We are a thriving spiritual community, sharing love, building bridges, and inspiring transformation. Lana Marie is a Kirtan artist, singer, songwriter, and poet. She also practices energy healing techniques such as Reiki and sound healing using Reiki and her voice. All her life, she's had melodies coming to her and, and through her. She loves singing, creating, and caring for people. Lana performs as Lana Marie and the Sonic Mystics, and is also part of the women's trio Star Sister Revival. Please welcome Lana Marie Haas. Oh 
Good morning. My name is Jay Pryor, and I am pleased and thrilled to be with you here today. I'm a lay member of the Unity of Lawrence Congregation. So thank you, thank you for being here. This is my second time to get to zoom in with you, so I'm thrilled about it. If you don't know me as a lay member here, um, I am a Lawrence resident here, and I have two little kids, and I'm a life and executive coach and a truth seeker. I've been part of the Unity community since 2007, and one of my favorite things that we speak about in Unity is being a truth student. And so the idea for me behind being a truth student is I am always learning. I am always in an inquiry. I'm always getting curious about how to, what I call, be my highest best self. Be in alignment with my source is another way to, to talk about that. So I'm thrilled to be with you here today. Um, today was going to be Sharon Dwyer, and um, she was unable to make it. She was feeling a little under the weather. So Sharon, we want to offer you a bunch of healing, love, and light. And um, I'm happy to step in. And Sharon's topic was about times changing. I was thinking about this topic all week. And one of the things that came to my mind was a memory about being a, a uh, preteen, like a, I think I was in junior high. And like some of you, um, I grew up with three channels, right? We had ABC, NBC, and CBS, and that was it, right? We didn't, have, we didn't have cable. Our phones were attached to the wall, you know, with a long cord sometimes. And I remember being in like seventh or eighth grade, and one of my friends um, in my town, which my, I grew up in a town that was one square mile big, and there were 500 people in it. And so one of my friends in my town, their parents got a satellite dish. Now I remember this thing just being huge. I don't know if you, do y'all remember when the satellite dishes came in? <laughs> and we were first, that was when first we were starting to, people were getting other channels than these three channels. So this friend of mine's parents got this huge satellite dish. And for us, what that meant was we got introduced to MTV. So we were, I was like eighth grade or freshman year in high school, I was like 13 or 14 years old. And for the first time in my life, we saw these music videos and it was amazing to us. I mean, it was just like, holy smokes, they spent all this time and money and these cool videos. Um, and then by the time, of course, Michael Jackson came out with Thriller, all of us were tapped in to see what that video was gonna be all about. Nowadays, music videos are just, so commonplace that my kids always go look up the video anytime they like a song. It's just something that we have that's normal. My children, who are 10 years old now, at the age of three, I remember distinctly, my youngest, Emmett, getting a hold of my wife's phone and changing the ringtone on it. He was three years old. <laughs> so we were like, how, what, how, how did they do that? And it seems like the younger generation, or my kids anyway, who are, you know, 10 years old, just are like these little aliens that were born with this knowing of technology. It's like they were born built in with the knowledge of how to manipulate and move technology in a way that I am still learning <laughs> and sometimes often fail at. And so, it just, as I think about that, how times have changed just in my lifetime. I remember when dishwashers became, we got my mom, a, my siblings and I, I think, all got my mom a dishwasher when I was probably a junior in high school, so early 80s. That was revelatory. My God, you can actually, you don't have to stand and do dishes. And we had a line, we had a lot of kids. So we always had a dishwasher, a dryer, and a putter a wiper, right? And that's how it went. <laughs> and so all of a sudden we have this, this machine and this one we had to pull up and attach to the sink, right? So it would work. So the dishwasher came in, microwaves, all those things, right? And our children are just born into this world of technology that really is mind blowing. It is mind blowing the stuff that they can do today. 
I know that cars are we're working on cars that fly. <laughs> I don't think they're working on my jet pack yet. I've been looking for that since the Jetsons. But they're working on cars that fly and not long from now, we'll be able to see holographic meetings. Like you'll be able to holograph yourself into some meeting. It's just like Star Trek. So times have shifted and changed so much in such a fast period of time that if you, for example, were an expert in something five years ago and you haven't paid attention to it, you can pretty much guarantee that what you know is obsolete, right? So we have to keep up all the time. And so things are happening so fast with technology. And then right now, we are in some of the most uncertain times that I've ever experienced for sure. Um, I know that my parents lived, my mom lived through the, well, yeah, the Dust Bowl, right? 1935, my mom lived through the Dust Bowl. Um, my parents lived through wars. I mean, there were lots of things they went through. And I would assert that most people feel like this is one of the most uncertain times in our world, in our country, for sure. And so we have questions about our climate. We have questions about the political system. We have questions about just everything. And so it's more important now than ever for each one of us to be able to ground ourselves in our faith. And by grounding yourself in your faith, what I mean is, for me anyway, what that means is on a regular making sure that I connect up with my source. So I know as a human being that I can just be tricky trotting along and having life and everything's fine and not notice that I have gone unconscious to my spiritual practices. Like I can still do that. And I'm somebody who flexes my muscle on that spirit, on those spiritual practices a lot, but I can just be, you know, going along and doing my life and then realize it's been a while since I meditated. It's been a while since I, you know, really got present to that presence within myself. And when I notice is always when I've just been an ass. <laughs> like it never fails. <laughs> I mean, it never fails. It's always when I'm, I get to the point where I'm like a complete ass, and then I'm like, oh man, like I've, I'm completely out of alignment with my source. I'm not in integrity with what I'm doing to stay dialed in. That always happens to me. So I'm asserting that that probably happens to some of you, right? Because we're all human and we have a lot of human experiences. And so the first thing that I think that we have that we want to do, and you know, one, one of the things in the topic that Sharon was talking about is getting curious, right? Getting curious. And for me, I love getting curious. I have been able to use curiosity as a way to keep me out of hijack. To, and remember, hijack is when our amygdala fires and it washes out our right and left prefrontal cortex and then we're like left all mad and freaked out, right? So I can get curious about my triggers. I can get curious about my response to stuff. I can get curious about, you know, what is it that's going on in the world that's having me so bunched up and where is my focus that that's impacting me so much. So getting curious is such a powerful tool. And if you can get curious, curiosity can shift you out of anger. It can shift you out of, you know, resentment. It can shift you out of so many things because curiosity is an, an invention right? It's us, oh, I'm going to decide to be curious. Isn't that fascinating? As humans, we can decide to be a particular way. And by deciding to be that way, we literally shift our energy into something else. I mean, this is a power within us that is amazing. In Unity, we talk about the 12 powers. And to be honest, I can't remember if curiosity is one of the 12 powers right now. I don't think it is. But the power of imagination is what comes to my mind in the 12 powers because deciding to be imaginative, curiosity is imaginative. When I decide to be curious, then I use my imagination and I start to look from different people's perspectives, or I get curious about what the heck is going on over here that has me feel this way. And so curiosity, I think, is a great bold step for you anytime, for me anyway, anytime I start to feel off or I've just been a jerk or I've just, you know, I'm not in a good space or I'm fearful, anything like that, if I start to get curious about what it is, all of a sudden, it's almost like distracting me from the fear, right? Curiosity can distract me from the fear. And so building a muscle and getting curious 
I think is so super important. And the most important thing I also assert to get curious about is where is my focus? Where is my focus? Because if I am fearful, if I am mad, if I am living in resentment or focusing on what is so right this second that I can't control, then I am like bunched up. And when I get curious, all of a sudden I've made a decision to get curious and look at it from a different way. Now, sometimes I need support and help from either humans or from source. And I say source because that's my, right now I call it God, the universe source, whatever you want to call it for yourself. But getting curious about if what happens when I open my heart up, right? I get open hearted. I open my heart up and lock into my source, right? Connect up to that. Now through, we talk about this a lot in unity that the way that we do that is through prayer and meditation, right? And just today, as we were starting out and Karen led us in this prayer, this is the kind of thing that I believe so much in and that it just always kind of taps me right in the heart when it works like this. But Karen mentioned this morning in her prayer to allow us, oh, it makes me just, oh, I'm very moved by the idea of allowing ourselves to, re to reveal, and I can't remember the exact words she said, but to feel the glory, the glory, of the universe from within us. Wow. Like the fact that she said those words tells me that that is actually possible, right? And I could feel it within my being when she said that, to feel the glory, right, of our source from within us. Like us, like we are the source. <laughs> we are tapped into the source and we're feeling that glory. And so for me, getting curious about where my focus is is so important because what we know as a fact from human being is that what we focus on always expands. What we focus on always gets bigger. It is just a, it's the law. And the law is the law is the law. And we know that the law says what we focus on always, always, always gets bigger. And so it's so important that we notice and get curious about where is our focus. And I can guarantee you that if your focus is being intentional about connecting to your source on a daily or multiple times a day to connect up the way Karen just led us, feeling that glory. If that is your focus, I promise you, you're not going to be all bunched up the way you would be if your focus is watching MSNBC News all day. <laughs> I guarantee it. And right now, because everything is so uncertain, we are really pulled towards that information that just inundates us constantly. We're really pulled to want to know what's going on. The truth is when I was a seventh grader and eighth grader, we had three channels. We would not have news about some, about the president popping off at the mouth. We just wouldn't, that wouldn't be in the news. There were so many things that we didn't know about because we didn't have access to the technology that probably saved our bacon in some ways. I mean, it kept our cortisol lower anyway. So nowadays, you can hear and make a case for almost anything that you decide that you wanna latch onto and be stirred up about, right? Whether it's immigration or the climate control or, there's so many things right now that you could decide to be stirred up about that. And the question is, how much, is it worth it? Is it worth your peace of mind to have this information? And for me, the answer is no, it's not. So I don't read the news, I don't watch the news. I pretty much can hear, I know what's going on, I know for sure, but I don't have to inundate myself with it. I don't do more than 15 minutes a day for sure if I do any news, but mostly I don't really do any news. And believe me, I still know what's going on. For me, it's a choice about where I want to focus. And when I start to get, you know, skewed one way or another, I start to feel yucked up. I guarantee you that my focus has been on that thing out there, not this in here. 
And in Unity, we have very specific, we have very specific ways that we know how to get into prayer. We have very specific like information around meditation. Anything that you want or need to connect up to your source, we have at Unity as part of our practices. And it's important that we note that you have to practice. That for me, like I said, I'll notice when I haven't been practicing because I turn into an ass usually. <laughs> Something happens and I turn into a real jerk. And then I'm like, oh wow, I haven't been practicing my spiritual practice. And so I do it again. And I forgive myself, I get back on the horse for my practice. My question to you is today, and what I want you to get curious is around your practice and where your focus is on a daily, maybe on an hourly, like where's your focus right this minute? Is it on connecting to source and being open hearted and therefore being someone who that, like I love the way she, uh, Karen spoke that, that glory to come through you from the inside. Are you focusing there or are you focusing on MSNBC or Fox News or CNN or all the other things that we could be stirred up about? Now, I hope you, if you don't know me, I am a transgender activist and advocate. So I want you to know that I don't just sit around and lollygag on my butt and not do anything to make the world a better place, right? I don't have to watch the news, in fact, it's better for me if I don't, to stay active in my community and to serve and give back. And again, I feel like if you're focused on a place of fear, of resentment, of regret, of all these things that can bunch you up, if you're focused there, I promise you're not serving anyway. <laughs> you're not serving either. You're just too stirred up to be able to do that. So when we're aligned with source through prayer and meditation, my practice is prayer and meditation. My practice is also getting in nature. I mean, all of those things that I do to connect up to source and to feel that glory come through from within me. And when I'm in alignment like that, I just know and have great, great faith that even though we have all this stuff that's uncertain, we, I, we really, really are birthing something amazing. Like there is something coming that we will be beyond belief surprised at how amazing everything works out. And we never know that until 2020 hindsight. And all of you have lived through things that you look back and you're like, boy, I didn't saw that coming. <laughs> I have such great faith in that right now. That And I don't think that in the next few months, it's going to get any better. In fact, I think it might get worse if that's where you're focusing. <laughs> if you're focusing on that, we're going to see a whole lot more of it, I believe. I also believe that something else is getting birthed out of this. And every woman I know who's given birth tells me labor is intensely, intensely painful. And right now, as a nation, as a species, we humans are rebirthing something, and I don't know what it is, but I believe and have great faith that it is a powerful, positive move forward for us as a species. And I believe that one of the lessons that we are to learn throughout this time is the same thing that we've been learning from the beginning, which is connecting to source and being in alignment with our truth, right? There's only one truth. There's only one power and presence in the universe, God the good. And I'm part of that. And living that truth on a daily basis gives me an opportunity, lots of opportunities, to have the glory of the universe of God coming through me. And thank goodness for unity, for giving us the tools to know how to access that glory, how to access and open our heart up to that and be willing to invite that into our lives. I'd like you to uh, take a moment right now and get however you want to get. If you're somebody who wants to sit with your feet, feet planted to the ground, we're getting ready to go into meditation. So you can sit that way. If you're somebody who likes to sit crisscross applesauce and meditate, do that. If you're somebody who likes to lay down, you're at home. Do what you want to do. But I invite you to come with me for a minute and meditate on this idea of connection, of focus, of curiosity. If you feel comfortable closing your eyes, you may do that. 
I invite you to take three deep breaths and then blow them out as deep as you can. And in between, hold them for just a few minutes. Not a few minutes. You don't want to hold your breath for a few minutes. <laughs> Sorry. I invite you to feel the relaxation of those deep breaths. Now, as you have your eyes closed, breathing normally, if you can focus just on my voice. The first thing I'd like to do is ground us. If you can imagine cables, threads, whatever rope that you feel confident, comfortable in coming out of your feet. That cable is busting down through the building that you're in, through your home, down through the rock and sediment, gathering leaves and vines and dirt, through the silt, the sand, all the way down to the heart of the mother, the core of the earth. Feel those cables locking in to the heart of the mother and then winding around that core until you feel like you are planted, solid. Then I want you to feel that good earth energy coming back up through those cables from the heart of the mother, from the core of the earth, coming back up through the silt and the sand and the dirt, bringing leaves and vines along with it, up in to your feet. Feel that good earth energy coming in between your toes. Feel yourself in the earth. Feel that good earth energy climbing up your ankles, into your calves, over your knees, up your thighs, up into your pelvis and your, up to your waist. You are now planted in earth, grounded. You belong here. You belong here on this planet, on this earth, where you chose to come to, to seek the truth. You belong here and you are planted. Now I'd like you to skip up to your crown chakra, the very top of your head. Feel that open and feel light from source coming down, down into your crown chakra. You can feel that light like sunshine when it feels warm on your face. You can feel that light coming down over your forehead and over your third eye down over your ears and your nose and your mouth. And your entire head is just filled with that light. Over your throat chakra and your shoulders, all the way down your arms. And as it comes down your chest, I want you to feel your heart chakra, throw the shutters open on a spring day and feel that warmth in that breeze coming through you as light, as your heart chakra is thrown open, willing to feel your source. This is the source of your being. When you are standing here, the glory of your source coming from within you. This is who you truly are. Coming to this place is where you can always come to feel safe and to get a knowing of who you are, who you truly are. Let's take a few minutes in the silence 
And I invite you to be with your heart chakra thrown wide open and just be still and listen in the silence. As you listen, I hope that you hear, I am, that I am. I hope you hear who you are, how powerful you are, how good it feels to be connected. And while you're still listening, I'm going to leave you here for a moment while I remind you that your deepest fear is not that you're inadequate. Your deepest fear is that you're powerful beyond measure. It is your light, not your darkness, that most frightens you. You ask yourself, who am I to be gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of the universe, and your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory, the glory of the universe that is within us. And it is not just in some of us. It is in every one of you. And as you get, let your own light shine, you unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. And as you're liberated from your own fear, your presence automatically liberates others. I invite you to keep that thought. We are here to make manifest the glory. I invite you to start coming back to me Maybe stretch, wiggle your toes and your fingers. I hope this has given you an, an opportunity to think about being curious, to think about your source and connecting up and to remind you that who you are is that glory of the universe within you. I love you, I appreciate you. I can see the divinity in you even through a computer. And thank you for allowing me to be with you today.
listening to the sweet song, the song of the unsung surrender. Thank you, thank you. I invite you to join me as we hold our gifts to this community in our hands and love in our hearts. Let's affirm together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. While Holly sings, where I sit is holy, please go online and give via PayPal or write a check and mail it to Unity of Lawrence. Thank you. Where I sit is holy, holy is the ground. Forest, mountain, river, listen to the sound. Great Spirit circles all around me. Great Spirit circles all around me. Who I am is holy, holy are we. Body, thought, emotion connecting you and me. Great Spirit circles all around me. Great Spirit circles all around me. What I do is holy, holy is my way. Work and play together. Celebrate the day, great spirit circles all around me. Great spirit circles all around me. Where I sit is holy, holy is the ground, forest, mountain, river, listen to the sound. Great Spirit circles all around me. Great Spirit circles all around me. Great Spirit circles all around me. Thank you, Jay. Ah.
Grateful, grateful, grateful. We open our hearts to the grace and the good that is truly always available to us. We give thanks that our shared spiritual home is safe and well and awaiting us for our physical reconnection when the time is right. But for now, we are grateful for the technology that brings us together to connect in this virtual way, sharing love and spreading peace. And may the glory of God be yours to wear from the inside out. Thank you, God. Amen. and figures and instructions for dancing but I Thank you, Lana, that's beautiful. We have some announcements. <clears throat> we would love to hear your feedback about today's service. Let us know if we can do, what, let us know what we can do to improve the experience. Reach out to a board member or contact Kathy in the office. We send out a weekly e-news on Mondays. If you are not receiving your copy, please let Kathy know in the office and she can be sure to add you to the list. This is also the email list that the board uses for special announcements and information, so please be sure to be on it. Join us next week as Jackie Hawkins speaks on Rediscovering the Light We Are. Special music will be provided by Millie Webb. And now let us bless our youth and each other. We love you, we bless you, <clears throat> we appreciate you, and we behold the divinity in you.
Now let's sing the peace song with Steve Epley. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as creator, children all are we. Let us walk with each other. be the moment now with every step I take let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me Now let us pray the prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Stay online if you would like to attend a breakout session with your Unity community. Thank you all very much and God bless.